Good day, crew, and welcome to another episode. A few episodes back, someone asked me to do a video on overnighting in the bay. It's taken me a little while to get to it, but I thought now is an appropriate time to do it. I'm going to cover some of the considerations for picking a spot to overnight. Primary one, of course, is wind, but you've also got to consider the current, the bottom, and its ability to hold an anchor. And I'll deal with them on a spot by spot basis. I won't cover everywhere you can go in the bay, but I'll cover the ones that I have been to personally, and I'll cover the general things you have to consider about picking somewhere. So if you go somewhere I haven't been, you'll at least have an idea of what to look for and assess to see if it's going to be a good spot. The first thing I want to say is that we live at one of the best bays in the world. It is a great spot for fishing, it's a great spot for boating, We've got some beautiful islands in the bay. We've got some rather muddy ones as well. But that's all fine because that's where the mud crabs are. However, it does have one drawback. And that is that the bay is basically orientated north to south. And if you look at the wind rows here, you'll see that that is also the prevailing wind is either from the north or the south for most of the last five years. The main exceptions is when it turns to the south-southeast or the southeast, and those directions are just as bad, especially when the wind's a bit strong. If the wind's down below 10 knots, it doesn't matter what direction it comes from, it's basically okay, even with wind against tide, it's not too bad for most boats, at least not for most of the boats that I've owned. Some of the tinnies I wouldn't take out, but for most of the fiberglass boats, or all the fiberglass boats I've owned, it wouldn't be a problem. I tend to waffle on a bit in these videos, so I'm not sure how long it's going to go. I might even end up doing two episodes on it to cover everywhere I want to talk about. I'm going to start with Morton Island and then go to Peel Island. There's not much structure to it, but they're the two of the most popular islands to visit in the bay. So I'll start with those two and then we'll work into some other areas. See how it goes for time. As I say, I might end up splitting this into two episodes. Basically... Pretty much the entire west coast of Morton Island is acceptable as an anchorage. At least everywhere that I've anchored along that coast has been pretty good over the years. I haven't had any issues with the anchor holding, except maybe Curtin Artificial Reef. You've got to be careful where you drop your anchor there because it will get tangled in the wrecks and a lot of anchors have been lost there apparently. But apart from getting your anchor caught up in a wreck, I've found most of the grounds are very good for anchorages. I'll start off by looking at this area up here on the northern end of the western side of Morton Island and then we'll work our way down south. And by this northern section I mean from the Tangaluma airstrip, which the arrow is pointing to here, past Cowan Cowan, where the arrow is pointing to in this shot, and up to Bulwa, where the arrow is pointing to in this shot. Although this isn't a fishing video, I'll just mention that in that section of the island you have the Curtin Artificial Reef here, along with a lot of potential fishing ground to the north of that, along what is mostly referred to as a Bulwa drop off. This is the track I had from the last trip I did up there. I did actually spend the night a little bit north of Bulwa on this occasion. You can see where the track starts the next day. I went back out around the top of Morton. It starts just a little bit north of Bulwa. That was a good anchorage, nice good sand to hold in. And with the prevailing wind, it was quite calm that night and the current wasn't excessive. And this is a screenshot from a trip prior to that where I overnighted just inside of the Curtin Artificial Reef. So on the Morton Island side of the Curtin Artificial Reef. And I did that just so I didn't get my anchor tangled in a wreck. Just in case it dragged while I was asleep. I do set the anchor alarm just in case on the GPS, but just in case the anchor drags and gets tangled in a wreck, I don't want to lose it. Anchors are expensive, anchor ropes are expensive, and I don't want to have to cut the anchor off. I have lost half an anchor in the past, and I'll talk about that later on when we get to that spot. I don't want to do it again. So as you can see in this shot, if you're anchored somewhere in the middle of the Bulwa to Cowan Cowan area, you're protected from winds anywhere from the north through the east to the south. So winds coming anywhere in that yellow arc, you've got a reasonable shelter from it, provided it's not gale force wind, of course. And the stronger the wind is, the closer you need to get into shore to get the calmest area. That all stands to reason. 
anywhere. If you've got an island and you want to anchor up for the night, pick the spot where the wind is coming across the island because that'll block the wind off your boat. And as I just said, if the wind's very strong, it's not going to block all of it so it can still get rough. You've got to decide whether that's likely to happen. I've been caught out once in my life where the wind didn't go anything like forecast. There was a freak storm came up. It hadn't been forecast at all. I've covered that in a previous video. That was quite an experience that I'll never forget. So I do try my very best not to repeat that. And that pretty much covers the area from the Tangalima airstrip up past Bulwa. As I've said, it's a good anchorage. There are some pretty thick grass beds there. I tend to avoid them because... Sometimes the anchor doesn't go through the grass, depending on what sort of anchor you've got. I prefer to anchor in clean sand where possible, so do keep your eye out for that. But everywhere I've anchored along there, the anchor's always held well, so I've no reason to expect it not to be the case all the way along there. As long as you're in a sandy area, it should be fine. But do test it for yourself, and do make sure you put your anchor watch alarm on your GPS if you're staying overnight. I've never dragged an anchor overnight, but I have seen boats that have. And I always let out three to four times the depth of the water in road. So let your chain out, get the length of your road is three times the depth of your water, let that out, at least. Having more out never hurts, but having less out is dangerous. And moving further south brings us to the area of Tangaluma. That's the old whaling station at Tangaluma, which is now a resort. Quite a nice resort. I visited it once for a whale watching tour. I took my wife over there for that. But if you're going over there in a small boat, don't expect much of a welcome from the resort unless you booked yourself in there. If you're just turned up in a boat, they don't want to know you. You can't use the facilities at all. Which is fair enough. They've put them there for the enjoyment of their guests who are paying for the privilege. And zooming in on that area, you can see the Tangaluma Resort in this aerial view. And... The jetty there is just a little bit to the south of the Arrow. Boats are coming in and out of there all the time. That's the Tangalima Ferries. A couple of big cats that run continuously, bringing the guests to the island. So make sure you stay out of their way. And just to the north of the Tangalima Resort is the famous Tangalima Wrecks. They were sunk there deliberately to form a breakwater, and they make great snorkelling. People try to fish them. I haven't seen anything caught there. I've heard some people say they catch things there. I've never caught anything there. Too much boat traffic, too many people. The fish are wised up to what's going on and they just don't take a bait. That's my theory anyway. If you're there and you want to throw a line in, by all means drop it in. You might get lucky. I haven't. But then again, I haven't stayed at the Tangalima wrecks all that often. I'll just zoom in on this area of the wrecks. You can see the wreck symbols there on the map. And the area in behind the wrecks, between the wrecks and Morton Island, is where everyone wants to anchor up, particularly when there's a bit of wind coming from the west. It's a really calm, safe anchorage. I've been in there a few times. It does get pretty crowded, particularly on long weekends, I believe. I try to stay clear of it when there's a crowd. But if you get caught up there and the weather turns sour, uh, it's one place to have a look at, try and get into some comfort. Just bear in mind that everyone else is going to have the same idea. And in these pictures here of the wrecks, you can see that there are times when you've got the wrecks almost to yourself. I guarantee that's going to be midweek times. Of a weekend, there's going to be a crowd there. They are great for snorkeling. If you're into snorkeling, don't get your flippers out, your mask, your snorkel, and go for a swim around the wrecks. You'll see lots of fish around them. They just don't like to take bait. Moving on south of Tangaluma Point, there's a decent little anchorage in there. Not many boats use it, but it's not too bad. I haven't overnighted there, but I have stopped there and spent a few hours there for lunch and things. Anchor holds quite well. Not too much current the times I was there. And it is sheltered by the island. So if I was looking for a spot, in relatively mild weather to overnight, I'd consider that one. Although I think you could stop anywhere in the area that you see on the screen. I like this northern area the best where I've got the little yellow mark and that's the area that I've stopped in to have lunch a few times. 
There's a sand bank a little bit to the west of it, so at low tide that'll break any waves that are coming in towards you from the west. And that's only going to happen if the wind's from the west. And to be honest, I wouldn't be considering overnighting anywhere along the western side of Morton Island if the weather was coming in from the west. Mainly because of the risk that it's going to strengthen higher than the forecast and then you're stuck. The only place that you're going to be well sheltered there is back at the Tangalima Rex and further south at Day's Gutter. We'll talk about that one shortly. And this is the sort of windrows that I would consider for overnighting here. I'd want the wind to have at least a bit of an easterly component and not too much southerly. Of course, if the wind isn't too strong, it may not matter. We'll jump further south now to the sand hills and skip the intervening distance. It is possible to anchor up anywhere along there, I believe. I've only stayed there for afternoon periods, but the anchorages seem fine. Anyway, this is the sand hills. You can get right in close to the beach. It's a nice beach there, and it's quite popular, so there's usually a lot of boats there. Whenever I've dropped anchor there, it's held well in the sandy bottom. There hasn't been an excessive amount of current. I don't think I've ever overnighted there with a trailer boat, but I did overnight there a couple of times with a larger boat, and no problem at all. This is the windrows that I would consider for overnighting there, and probably anywhere from the pretty much the north around through the east to the, say, south, southeast. And as always, depends on the strength of the wind. A little bit further south again is the Blue Hole. That's quite a popular fishing spot. Got a lot of flathead and whiting in there, or at least used to back in the day. I haven't fished it for a long time. But you do get some protection there from the weather as well. You used to see a lot of larger boats overnighting in there. Maybe some trailer boats do these days. I haven't overnighted there in a trailer boat. I haven't overnighted there in a big boat. I used to go in there in the dinghy to fish. Bottom is good. Holds an anchor well. I think there was a bit of weed there, as I recall. Lots of sandy area as well, and not too much current. The only acceptable entrance into it at the moment is that line of beacons from near the sand hills down into the Blue Hole. Got the arrows flashing there. Used to be able to get to it from Day's Gutter, but they removed all the beacons from Henderson's Gutter now. I have taken the trailer boat through it, my current boat, and you can get through on a reasonably high tide if you tilt your motor right up. It is a very, very shallow passage and I wouldn't recommend doing it. So the only entrance you're going to get into the Blue Hole at the moment is the one that I'm showing here. If you do overnight in the Blue Hole and you do get caught out with bad weather, there is one possibility that I would consider, other than leaving the area entirely, and that is to go into the top end of Henderson's gutter. Now the bit that I'm talking about is very shallow. You're not going to get in there with anything other than a trailer boat. But just inside a little bit is a small patch of deeper water. So if you got caught out in some really bad weather, I would consider going in there and trying to get to that patch of deeper water. You're only going to do that if you're on a fairly high tide. It won't get through there at low tide, I wouldn't think, just from my experience. And that was a couple of years ago, so things could have changed again. Maybe you can't get through there at all. So be a little bit careful if you're ever forced to try it. But, as I said, I would consider going into that deeper area and anchoring up in there because the sandbanks will protect you from the worst of it. It's always good to have a plan B, just in case things go wrong. And then that brings us to the southern end of the island and Day's Gutter. That is a terrific anchorage for almost any weather. You can find somewhere in there that will protect you from pretty much anything, or almost anything. Once you get into Day's Gutter, it's a fairly deep and reasonably wide gutter there. I've been in it at times when the water is just crystal clear, and you can see the bottom, you can see everything on the bottom. A really nice place to anchor up. And of course the famous gutter bar is there if you're inclined to go ashore. But the main attraction is as a safe anchorage, at least for me. There's three ways to get into today's gutter. The first one I'm showing you here is to go through the Rouse Channel and then branch off into Brown's Gutter and through Black's Gutter into Day's Gutter. 
That's probably the best. It probably has the deepest water of all of them. Although you still need to take a little bit of care getting through because the sandbanks all around you. This next one is doable on a higher tide. And I'd do it on a rising tide in case you come to grief. You don't want to be stuck there for a full turn of the tide. But if you're coming from the Rouse, given the choice, I'd take the former entry into it rather than this one. And finally, this is the way I used to take the big boat in there. And that's going back quite a few years. It's shallowed up since then. You still get a trailer boat through there, but I'd be very careful because the map shows that there are some areas that come close to being exposed at low tide. So again, somewhere I would look at going through on a higher tide. And at least for the first trip in on a rising tide, just in case you touch bottom, you know you're going to get off again really soon. The other comment I'd make about this is you're travelling just inside the South Passage Bar, so that water can get pretty rough at times, even inside the bar. So again, your best entry is from the Rouse through to Brown's Gutter, through Black's Gutter, in today's gutter. Well, I really thought I'd cover Morton Island and at least Peel in this video, but as I said at the beginning, I do tend to walk along a little bit. And I'm afraid I've run out of time to put any more in the video this week. I'll continue it next week, and by the looks of it, I might end up doing maybe a third video. I'll see how it goes. I'll try to fit it all into the next video if I can. I'll cover Peel, and I want to cover some of the other islands where you can anchor up for the night. I hope you found it interesting. Until next time, good fishing.